was a comment. So we go to the next uh, paper entitled Neutron Scattering Investigations of Adsorption on Porous Solids. Uh, this is by uh, Monkis from uh, Berlin and uh, Ramsey. And it will be uh, Dr. John Ramsey who will deliver it from the Laboratoire des Matériaux et Procédés Membranaires in uh, Montpellier. John? You are ready. Good morning. <coughs> so, this uh, talk will be concerned with the use of neutron scattering, uh, small angle scattering, to study uh, absorption in porous solids, and it's a collaboration between the laboratory, the laboratory of material, and possibly Montpellier, Montpellier and the uh, group in uh, Berlin at the High Mind Institute where we did the neutron scattering. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> brief plan I've shown there will cover, I'll uh, firstly say something about characterization of, of porous solids and how one can do that with small angle scattering, and then indicate how one can use this contrast variation technique to get information about absorption and then show, illustrate that with some work we've done looking at benzene absorption on a model uh, mesoporous uh, gel, a silica gel, and then say something about the possible applications of this technique in the future to other, other systems. So quickly, you, you've already heard from Dr. Erdberger Dole in her talk some of the applications of small angle scattering. Essentially, it gives you uh, details of uh, structure in this range, 1 to uh, uh, about 100 nanometers. Uh, <coughs> and it arises from variations of scattering density in the system. And then this is variations in the scattering length density. And the intensity is dependent on the square of the difference between the scattering length density between uh, if you have two phases, the two phases in the system. So if you have pairs, you have a zero scattering density, and the uh, row one would be the density of the solid. And I've just indicated some scattering densities for uh, different materials here. These would be absorbates. Um, these are typical uh, porous materials. If one does x ray scattering, the uh, scattering density is determined by the electron density. So one hasn't got this scope for varying the scattering density of an absorbate, as you can here if you replace uh, hydrogen to deuterium in the molecule. This makes a big difference because the difference between hydrogen and deuterium and the scattering length density is great. So with neutrons, one could have uh, a, a continuous variation of uh, this scattering density uh, from the hydrogenated to the deuterium form. And that allows us to match the scattering density of the absorbate to that of the solid, and we'll be talking about silica and benzene. <coughs> um, just quickly then to say something about small angle scattering. What we'll, what we'll be measuring is this intensity on a two-dimensional detector as a function of this parameter Q, which essentially is, the, is determined by the scattering angle. <coughs> and the information one gets essentially is in the low Q region here, which tells you details about the size and form of the scattering objects. And in the paper we already heard this morning, you get information about surface properties at higher Q in the coral region, where sometimes you can get deviations from coral behavior, which depend on the surface structure. If you have uh, model type structures, and I'll be talking about packings of spheres, we already heard from the professor. Uh, uh, Professor Everett's talk this morning mentioned capillary condensation sphere packings. This is something we will be addressing. But essentially, if you have a, a packed sphere system, the scattering is simpler, and what you see in intensity as a function of Q is an interference maximum, which depends on the size of the spheres and the way they're ordered in the system. And then you get a higher order maximum depending on the, uh, the size of the spherical particle. Um, 
Systems like that are um, typified by silica gels, and I'll just show you an idealized system here where you have spherical particles which pack in an idealized way, and one can form pores in such a structure. And so our systems will be uh, approximating something like this. <coughs> just quickly then, let me just say something about the contrast variation technique. Um, so so with, with, with sound, one looks at different, one can get information about different zones of scattering density in the system. So one can look at open and closed pores, uh, selective filling of pores, such as micro, micropore material. Uh, one can look at uh, molecular packing in micropores, where one may have different densities of the absorbent in micropore. And this area of capillary condensation mechanisms, which uh, uh, Professor Everett mentioned, is one area in which one can get insight at the microscopic level. And then there are details on one can derive on surface temperatures. This is after absorbing uh, a vapor or, or a gas in the system. Just let me quickly illustrate this contrast variation technique using uh, perhaps this example of selective filling of micropores. And some 30 years ago, uh, Dr. Gray and John Langford showed that if you have no name and you have a metoporous and micropores system of carbon, then uh, before absorption you get an isotherm of this sort after when you fill selectively <coughs> the micropores uh, you can cut the absorption at low tier of the norm. If you do the same thing with no name which is deuterated which has a, you know, a similar cross section to carbon and I've just shown that schematically here this would be the micropores what you would then get is the scattering from the mesopores and not, not the micropores that's just schematically a simple illustration of that technique. Let's go on now to the system where we have mesopause, and this is the system we'll be studying. Absorption of benzene, benzene 340 K, these are the properties of this uh, silica gel, which is made by the solar gel uh, method. <coughs> and with the solar gel method, one starts with spherical monodispersed particles, just illustrated. Yes, schematically, you start with a, a, a sol and concentrate it to give a micro uh, a mesopore as well. This is just showing the sweet scattering, the spawning of scattering as you go from the sol to a gel. I won't go into detail about the analysis of such uh, data. <coughs> Essentially, it's a simple, simple, relatively simple system to study absorption behavior. Uh, if you vary the size of the particle, the spherical particle diameter, one can produce uh, uh, gels with a very uh, poor size. These are showing isotherms as we go up in the particle diameter. And I'll say something about this gel here, which is, has quite, quite large reason pores. <coughs> uh, to do these <coughs> measurements, and some of the early measurements, have been done when you have you pre equilibrate samples and you look at them. This has drawbacks, but this equipment we use allows us to make in situ measurements, measure the isotherm on absorption and resorption, control the uh, pressure, the relative pressure very uh, precisely, and the sample temperature very precisely. This is important if one wants to make these scattering measurements at uh, high PM of or close to saturation. So I've just given some details about this equipment which allows you to do absorption, desorption cycles, measurements of high period of heal, and also make measurements of kinetics, just to have time to illustrate that. that. <coughs> that's, it's a bit complicated, but that's a diagram of the system. Um, the samples in here, <coughs> the cell, the reactors out here, the beam comes through. This is the thermostat for the sample. There's a vapor source here, energy. change the distance between the detector and the sample depending on the range of Q one wants to look at. <coughs> so just quickly I'll show some results for adsorption of different pier of the knobs. This red line is the scattering curve, this is Q, log Q, that's log I. This is the scattering curve of the outgassed silica, 
On a log basis, and what we see here is an interference maximum, which I indicate all this information about the ordering of the particles, the size, there's a uh, inflection here, which is due to the form factor. When we absorb uh, vapor, you see changes to this interference feature. We're going up in period in north. Uh, at point nine, we've effectively saturated the system. You can see the curve here, it's dropped by uh, two orders of magnitude and intensity. We haven't precisely, we haven't absolutely scattered or contrasted out, but effectively we have because uh, we have almost, because we haven't matched perhaps completely, or there may be uh, larger pores between the gradients which uh, give rise to scattering the very essentially matched out. Um, this, this is showing the kinetics. Above 0.67, we're in the hysteresis. We're rapidly moving into the absorption uh, uh, region of the condensation. And what we're showing here is the change that over periods of five minutes in uh, going from a P of P0 to 0.67 to 0.73. And you can see uh, quite, quite marked changes in the kinetics there. <coughs> Uh, on, on, on a linear basis, these, these effects are quite are more, perhaps more striking. This is the outgas gel, we see this in the of peak, which is completely, uh, uh, completely disappears uh, as, as we absorb in the system. And I'll say a bit more about why that happens. Um, so, so on, on desorption, that there are hysteresis effects. Curves. But this, these are the kinetics of desorption from 0.9 saturation to 0.6. Um, we go back to a curve here at 0.6, which is different from 0.67. This is the hysteresis in our system. Out, out here, I should have said, we're in scattering is typically, in, it gives the polar loss slowly, so the surface is uh, smooth, it's non fractal. Um, and then once we get uh, below about 0.56, we see reversibility in the scattering on, on the absorption. <coughs> well, we, we, uh, as a first uh, attempt, we analyzed these, these this, behavior. this is a simple, relatively simple system, and the pores are quite large, these are pores. So we can analyze <coughs> that in terms of absorption of the, uh, of the points of contact row of this subshaped structure. And this was here, this is the first days of absorption this is proposed many years ago as a mechanism of uh, capillary condensation in sphere packings by Kizilov. Uh, you, you fill this, this, uh, this uh, subshaped meniscus and eventually at some point C you get coalescence in the menisci and Spontaneous filling occurs, and in that respect, this can account for this uh, uh, loss of the interference maximum and the change in this uh, form factor of the spheres, which we see in the curve at high P of you know, at high Q. So, just quickly, uh, in, in this technique, I, I've only talked about one example where we look at the uh, scattering in situ. Uh, I think the future directions and applications of much taken into account that to work involving the daily model box systems and uh, perhaps one needs to analyze the data in, in theoretical simulations of uh, absorption in such systems. Uh, the technique is not restricted to these abhorrent systems. The microporous solids, as you heard, is considerable interest in the properties of fluids confined in microporous, the density and uh, packing of uh, molecules, for example. These are which could be looked at microscopically by that technique. Uh, as already mentioned by Professor Everett, the mechanisms of capillary condensation are still open. There's still a considerable amount of interest in this area, particularly the courts, which one can study using that technique. And then finally, uh, one can use the technique to look at non porous solids, <coughs> the packing of monolayers and multilayers which are related to T-curves, uh, 
the effects of the ball rate left to the size and shape. And then, of course, moving to complex ball structures, if one has uh, different scattering lengths in, you know, in a mixed oxide, for example, one can get into a heterogeneous system. And also, one, in, in, uh, in principle, can get the details of our kinetics in complex systems where we have gas mixtures. Thank you. Ramsey, there is a uh, time for uh, a few questions. Yes. What's your comment? scattering curve, one gets information about the surface area effectively and also fractal momentum as you know. But the fact that only when we start to get capillary condensation do we see uh, a drop. We still retain the same curve, so we have a, a smooth surface, but the surface area, the interface area is dropping in the system. We only begin to see that at the onset of capillary condensation in the system. Because the, the Absorb fill thickness up to two to three monolayers doesn't change the interface area of the radio. And so, in that respect, the surface area, the effective surface area, can change. There is no radio change in the scattering here. It's only when you get, get the condensate forward in the pores and then quite marked changes in the interface area when you see this, this, this effect. But it, it's, it's still due to minus, uh, due to minus four. You don't see these effects, which is fortunate, and uh, I think that uh, is simple to see with x ray marking. So it's a bit of a broken out of hydrocarbons. And there's a contractually from the factory of our system. Any other very short question? Yes, in the bottom. Uh, Dr. Mather? Um, well, uh, we have. I, mean, I should have pointed out the problem with you. You can't, you can't tr contrast out with nitrogen because what what we did there. I didn't say we used fifty nine percent deuterated benzene. If you, if you notice, there's a, a wide difference between hydrogenated and deuterated. So really, the, the technique is best adapted for uh, hydrocarbons where you can exchange hydrogen for deuterium or Water with nitrogen, it's not, it's not easy. You can't go in cross section. No, any other questions are postponed to the general discussion? Thank you once more to Dr. Ramsey. And now, next paper uh, is entitled A Poor Weight Sensitive Older Structure of water molecules in a carbon micropore. That paper is from uh, Liyama, Nishikawa, Otowa, Suzuki, and Kaneko. Uh, 